Perfect. So we prepared a small presentation. Um, I'll go ahead and start presenting that. We can just go ahead and get started. Uh, cool. So I'm Alex, uh, CTO here at Set Protocol, and we also have Brian on the call, who is our uh, smart contract developer. And this is an introduction to Set Protocol. Um, so very simply, from a high level. Uh, the set protocol is a system of contracts that facilitates creation, issuance, redemption, exchanges, and rebalancing of set tokens. Um, at the core of that system of contracts is the set token, which is effectively a ERC-20 on its own. Um, you can think of a set token as simply a pointer to uh, a list of other tokens and their allocations. And one of the axioms of our system is that a set token is always fully collateralized. So you can think of it as if you were to have a set of uh, components A and B, um, you have the right to redeem that from the contract. And so that was a very simple idea that we went out with in 2018 in our DAP called Token Sets. Um, in Token Sets, we featured three static sets. One was Ethereum X, which was just the top 10 ERC-20 contracts by market cap. Um, the other one was a stable set, which was just 50-50 true USD and DAI, and a DEX set, which tracked 0x, Kyber, and AirSwap. And that was an example of something that we call a thematic set. So if you wanted to track, for instance, uh, DEXs, you would be able to buy the DEX set and instantly have ex uh, exchange tokens. Um, so we launched that as just a very simple proof of concept. And um, we started getting feedback from our users. People asked questions like, hey, can I define my own composition? What was the process for that? Um, at the time, each set token was its own smart contract that we manually deployed. We didn't have a reusable, basically, uh, system where anybody could easily deploy a new set token. Um, it was just one fat contract that encased all of its own issue and redemption logic. And we ma very manually deployed those. Um, the second problem was the, the friction to acquire. Um, uh, basically, when you have a set token, the issuance process is you would need to have the underlying collateral yourself, and then when you call issue, it mints a new balance of the set token. And obviously, the pain point there was going out to all of the various decentralized exchanges or centralized exchanges and gathering all of those components. Um, and lastly, people kind of asked, you know, why would I do something like this? What can I do with it? If I have to gather the components, um, what is kind of the point? And so we spent the better part of 2018 doing research and development, um, upgrading our contracts to support more functionality for set tokens and allow people to more easily acquire set tokens. And so this is our new specification. Um, we're currently under audit. Uh, we completed an audit with Trail of Bits last week, and Chain Security Audit is in flight right now. So this is what the new system of contracts looks like. Um, all transactions kind of happen through core, and from there, we're able to uh, deploy different kinds of set tokens. So you'll notice that it's not just the static set token anymore. We now have a rebalancing set token. Um, and instead of having each set token hold the collateral for uh, that particular set, we now hold it in a contract called the vault. And that allows us to do really cool things down the road, like rebalancing. Um, so you take a look at this. This is just uh, what we call a more modular architecture that's more similar to, like, adheres more to Web 2.0 principles, where now we can later on add more factories. We can add more exchange wrappers. And I'll cover that in a little bit. Um, but basically, we can upgrade the protocol to they accept more standards as we go along. So I kind of want to cover um, some of the terminology because it gets kind of confusing um, within our system um, so that you guys can have uh, everything you need to ask questions. So the first thing we allowed um, with our contracts is creation. Um, and creation just means deploying a new ERC-20 set token that has its own composition and um, uh, composition of unique addresses and allocations. Money token and creating it doesn't mean that there's initially any supply. Supply and market cap both start at zero. Next is uh, issue it, uh, issuing and redeeming is uh, most often what, what gets confused with creation. Issuing is the process, again, of supplying the collateral 
from your wallet or from another contract to the core system and then minting a balance of the set. And then redeeming therefore is burning your balance of the set and retrieving the components from the system. And so now with these basic building blocks, we're able to do really interesting features. Um, the first of which that we spent last year uh, researching and developing is the issuance order. So uh, yeah, one of the problems with the, with the old system was that you needed to have each of the components in order to essentially mint a balance of the set token. And so we thought, what is a way where we can reduce that friction where you only need to have, for instance, ether and you can acquire a balance of the set. So we have two flavors of acquiring sets. Um, you can think of the issuance order as uh, analogous to some kind of limit order. And this basically follows the zero X protocol. Um, their method of off-chain order book and on-chain settlement. So a user would say, hey, I have one ether and I want this much of set, uh, this much of a particular set. And that set being made up of A, B, and C, you would declare basically, this is how much A, B, and C I need. And so um, you would sign that order, post it to any off-chain order book, and someone else can come along, read the order book, take that order, and submit it to the system along with two or three zero X orders, maybe one Kyber reserve, and all of, the, all of those things get executed at once. And the incentive for the taker would be to take arbitrage on the spread of uh, the orders for the individual components. So you could think of that as a limit order. And then the other flavor is exchange issue, where basically you don't need a maker and a taker, you have a user who basically says the same thing, I have one ether, I want this much of a set, and I'm going to tap into, I already have these zero X orders and this Kyber exchange, and I'm just gonna submit all of those to our contracts and mint the set. So it's important to note that these flows are, these flows will mint balances of the set token. Um, but in addition, once you have a set token, that can also be traded freely on another exchange, such as uh, Radar Relay. Yeah, and I'll dip into rebalancing here. Uh, so I guess the one point that's not on the slides to note is that rebal uh, rebalancing sets are collateralized by tokens. Um, so they aren't going to be collateralized by individual components directly. They're going to be collateralized through the, the, uh, the static set token. Uh, the rebalancing set has all the same properties essentially of uh, a static set token. We've now just added a process through which you can uh, shift the allocations of the tokens uh, collateralizing the rebalancing set token. So uh, there's a process that we do to go through that. Uh, each rebalancing set token has a manager. That manager is in charge of creating uh, new allocations. Um, they, when they create the rebalancing set token, they will initialize like how often they want the rebalance to happen. Um, the rebalance, the manager can be a human or it can be a smart contract. So you could code into the smart contract, uh, that perhaps reads some oracles, um, how you want the allocations to change over time. Um, so once the proposal goes through, there's a proposal period where all the token ho holders can review the proposal. They can, obviously, if, if they don't agree with the proposal, they can burn their rebalancing set and get back the collateral. Um, if they're fine with the proposal, they can just stay in the set. And then the, uh, the beginning of the rebalance is called. Uh, one thing to note is that during a rebalance, all issue and re issuances and redemptions are um, disabled. That's in order to make sure all the math works out. Uh, <laughs> dramatically reduces the attack vectors and things of that nature. But rebalances, we don't hope to last too, too long. Um, in order to proceed through the rebalance, people will bid on the, uh, on essentially exchanging components of set, of set A for set B. Um, now we don't do, we wanted there to be low capital requirements. So we don't require somebody to mint set A, or sorry, mint set B to inject it in it and return set A, if that makes sense. What we do is we say, okay, there's some sort of overlap in the tokens here. So we can basically net out the inflows and outflows and say, you can inject just one component of the set and receive one component back. So it dramatically decreases the capital requirements. We also kind of contrary to most 
uh, Dutch type auctions, which is, sorry, I didn't really say, that's what this is. Um, the settlement is immediate. So we don't just, you know, have a bunch of bids and then, uh, you know, settle it at the end. Um, we actually, so that bidders aren't taking currency risk, you will immediately receive your tokens and your bidding and you'll immediately be injecting those tokens into the system. Um, so yeah, once uh, a rebalance has been finished, then a settle a settlement procedure uh, is called and all the new uh, sets that are collateralizing the rebalancing set token are rebalancing set token, and then issuance and redemptions are uh, re-enabled. And uh, from there, then you have to wait another full rebalancing period, whatever the manager sets that to, you know, a week, a month, a quarter, uh, before another rebalance can go through again. Yeah, so what's really cool about this system is that just by holding a balance of this rebalancing set token, you can effectively take advantage of the quarterly or weekly or monthly rebalance without having to do anything. It really is the first opt-out system where you don't have to actively approve a rebalance. And basically, just by holding this, you are your right to the collateral in the vault shifts as a rebalancing uh, happens. So for instance, um, if you were holding on to, uh, if we had a rebalancing set that was uh, the, the new top 10 set um, after every, after every uh, quarter, if the top 10 tokens, if you know number 10 dropped out to number 11 and number 11 dropped in, then you would be able to withdraw that new token from the vault effectively after rebalance. Um, so we're really excited to give that offering um, with our upcoming launch. Uh, I know that's, we just threw a lot at you guys. I don't know if you guys have any questions at, at this point that we can answer before we move on. Good. Cool. Yeah, if there's anything. Um, so yeah, uh, we spent the better part of last year um, building out our smart contracts. And in an effort to kind of get more feedback from the community, we decided to go a developer route. So we put a lot of time into uh, putting together our developer library, setprotocol.js. It's, it's open source. You can go and check it out today. Um, and in addition, putting together documentation for how to use setprotocol.js. There's full-fledged tutorials in there for, um, instance, how to set up a issuance order or layer. Um, and we also have a tutorial for if you want to set up a rebalancing set token as a kind of uh, fund managing tool. So there's full-fledged tutorials in there check it out let us know if you have any questions. Um, yeah, there's a lot of ways that we work with zero X, not just directly through the issuance order where we tap into zero X liquidity, but you can also imagine, um, for instance, if you had a rebalance that was going live, how do you pair that with liquidity that's on zero X? So I think that'd be, you know, great ideas for you guys to, to tackle. Um, yeah. And looking ahead for set protocol, um, we, uh, we're undergoing audits right now. We just wrapped up with Trail of Bits, and we have the chain security audit going on right now. Um, we're looking to publish our contracts onto mainnet sometime in February of insets. So building on um, what we did last year, instead of now having very static you know, set tokens, we're allowing anybody to create their own to uh, participate in rebalances and to very easily mint new balances of these set tokens. So we're excited for that. Um, yeah, one thing that's one thing that we look forward to in the future is in addition to supporting only ERC-20s is also supporting additional token standards such as like R token securities, even wrapping derivatives into sets just makes for a lot of cool possibilities. One thing that we're talking to is Daxia um, that are working on derivatives. Yeah, I think this is a great way to kind of start creating some structured products um, that appeal to people within within the crypto space. So, cool. That was all we had for a short for a short presentation. I want to see if anybody else had um, had had questions. Yeah, I, I would. Yeah, just, I, I would. You guys could. You guys could touch on that because yeah, you know, because yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah,
So you're talking about the the Xerox multi asset proxy? Yeah. 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 Um, personally, I'm not as familiar with the multi asset proxy. Um, I think that's for what transferring multiple tokens at the same time. That type of idea, or is that? I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. I mean, for us, so we have a bunch of extra functionality built in now, right? So uh, the ability to to uh, rebalance is really one of the, the main ones. Um, essentially, the with zero x, just a way to more, I guess, more efficiently transfer tokens around. Um, this, we think, there's greater advantages in terms of uh, you know being able to have a token that represents a, a changing mix of assets, uh, even a static set of assets it's still um yeah yeah it's, it's a way to, to represent that as well but definitely the, the offerings for, for the rebalancing uh we think is very pretty differentiating because it allows you to essentially run a fund that's immediately tokenized um, yeah. anyone else uh, hi guys. Uh, hi guys. Just joined in. Sorry, hey, Mark, joined in. Sorry I'm um, um, Mark, yeah, I'm building a mobile. Mark, yeah, I'm building a mobile. We also had a company. We also had a company. Expo, which was Expo, um, which was coming. Uh, and it also contained also uh, contained batch uh, tokens. Batch tokens or um, tokens. Um, tokens. Tokens. Of course. Do it by. If I had if a card, I, 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 I wanted to add, add token, beef up token the value of that, and I can do that, that possibly. Or the NFT, or the NFT, but is that something that you guys are vulnerable? Sorry, you're cutting out a bit, but you were talking about NFTs, and at the moment, we don't really support NFTs specifically. Um, that's something we, we certainly hope to support because there's a lot of derivative type contracts and like you said, uh, titles and things like that that are, are represented in the format NFTs. Uh, at the moment, we're all dealing with fungible assets. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a, a fundamentally different way that sets of NFTs would have to be issued. Like if you held the NFT as collateral and then distributed shares of that you know, when would it be appropriate to redeem a set like that? So those are all things that we're exploring over the course of this year while we flesh out this current system. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just an idea. Yeah, it's just I'm an idea. I'm exploring. See if you guys. See if you guys have, uh, yeah, no, definitely. About it. We think it's it's important to be able to have some sort of NFT support. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be looking at that for sure. Cool. Cool. Justin asks, security tokens are exciting to incorporate with SET. What types of assets do you anticipate being tokenized in the near future? I think, I mean, the number of teams that are doing security token issuances has gone up significantly. Yeah. Like Abacus has joined the mix. Um, the interesting thing there for us at least is how do we also change the SET token standard to conform to the R token, like any security token standard. Um, they have very specific properties that we would have to enforce, such as like being able to reverse transfers. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the more exciting ones that I've heard of are real estate, um, real estate and equity, I think are the biggest targets right now. So a stake in any kind of uh, investment fund um, is being uh, tokenized or securitized mm -hmm. um, and being put on the blockchain. So those are things that in the, in the near future, if you wanna participate or uh, have representation in a bunch of different funds you could effectively buy one set token and you'd be included um in the cap table for uh, a number of different funds so we know abacus is working with a number of funds including um space fund and then one of one of other teams that we talk with pretty regularly is harbor and they're focusing more on real estate so you can imagine a set of that in the future would be um just getting exposure to different kind of real estate assets um, all over the country. Uh, follow on in regard to sets. Yeah, it really just is, um, for the most part, they have a lot of 
the the regulatory requirements um, or at the the settlement of security transfers written into one of their contracts. And for the most part, we'd have to ping that to see whether or not these are registered parties. Um, and in in all likelihood, the so right now this you know set token that's issued is ERC twenty. In all likelihood, the set token that's issued would have to be an R token or whatever the standard is itself, um, so that it you know, it could run all the checks that it needs to run when a transfer happens. So otherwise, there would be interesting ways you could get around legal loopholes through sets, essentially, because we keep everything in one vault. Um, yeah, there'd be there'd be ways for people to build up a balance and then skirt, you know, covenants and, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, there, there's definitely legal loophole. Uh, yeah, we have to kind of deal with that with our own personal sets that we create and then there's you know plenty of other compliance uh, issues that there's, there's gonna be layers of compliance essentially <laughs> that we have to, to deal with so. yeah so this year was really more focusing on um the feature sets of you know what you can do with a set token and now more of uh, later on this year we're going to be focusing on how do we apply that feature set to different token standards and so that'll be something exciting to to revisit down the road Guys, thank you so much for Guys, thank you so much. Uh, really, really, uh, really, 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 awesome. Awesome. Uh, we'll be sure to we'll record, record it in the next week, couple of days. Couple of days. Cool. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ping us. Um, if you go to docs.setprotocol.com, that has links to the white paper, has links to our Telegram. Feel free to just drop in and shoot us a message. Um, thanks for having us. Yeah. See you guys. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, guys.